Blessed be God the Father and the only begotten Son of God, and also the Holy Spirit, for he has shown us his merciful love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up to Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, the Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This indeed is stick-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Peter. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all and for all ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, 
praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss, and all the holy ones greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. The limitless beauty and splendor of Almighty God was one of then Pope Benedict XVI's favorite topics. In fact, one of the symbols on his coat of arms points to that directly, a seashell, seashell. The shell comes from the legend about St. Augustine walking along a seashore one morning trying to understand the most holy trinity suddenly ahead of him he sees a child playing the child had made a hole in the sand was walking back and forth from ocean to hole with the seashell would fill up the seashell with ocean water walk back pour it into the hole saint augustine watches this for a little while then finally asks what are you doing child answered, I'm going to empty the sea into the hole. And St. Augustine laughs out loud and says, child, that is quite impossible. Look at how big the ocean is. The child looked at him and answered, and yet it will be easier for me to do this than for you to understand the Holy Trinity and disappears. That's the legend. By putting the shell on his coat of arms, then Pope Benedict reminds himself and the whole church, our God is infinitely wonderful. He invites us to know and love him. And we must always remain humble and confident in God like a little child.
all of that so true. And the world does not want it. The world does not want us to know God or the truth at all. And the world seems to be working overtime, perhaps more so these days, to that end. One way, one way the world attempts it is the claim all religions are basically the same. And that today is considered a tolerant, open-minded point of view. In reality, it's ridiculous because it boils down to the idea there aren't real differences that matter. And where does it all start? Well, human nature, of course, is the same wherever we find human beings. Human nature has the same basic needs and problems, basic needs and problems, biological, emotional, spiritual. Every religion tries to address those needs for love, for happiness, for meaning, and tries to understand some basic things like sin, forgiveness, life after death. But obviously, different religions actually deal with all of that completely different ways. Atheistic religions say there's no God at all. Pantheistic religions, everything in the universe is part of and is God. Polytheistic religions, a whole bunch of competing gods. Monotheistic religions, like Christianity, one, all-powerful, infinite, eternal God. And then even within those difference groups, more difference, each presenting their own view for those that believe in a God and his nature and the path to happiness. A prime example of a difference is the great mystery of the Christian faith, the most holy trinity of the world's three monotheistic religions, Judaism, Islam, Christianity, only Christianity grasps the inner nature of God, that God is actually one divine nature, three divine persons. And each of the three divine persons possessing the fullness of the divine nature. Jesus himself revealed that truth to us, perhaps most easily understood or seen, seen in the end of the Gospel of Matthew. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And a trinity might seem like a contradiction. That's what Jewish and Muslim theologians insist. How can Father, Son, and Holy Spirit each be fully God and yet distinct? And yes, we are unable to completely understand that. Our minds cannot possibly comprehend it in its fullness, but pretty easy really to step back from and notice we limited imperfect beings. Our infinite perfect God should exceed our ability to comprehend him fully, to understand all that he is. That part makes sense. And it's just one difference among many, but a wonderful difference. Because a most wonderful thing about knowing that is true is that we Christians have been given a privilege no one else in the history of the world has been given. We are able to know that about God with an intimate knowledge. Philosophers, natural religion followers have only know about God from the outside. We, through Christ's grace, have actually begun to know God as he knows himself, and that is how much he loves us. He lets us and helps us know him. And that, easy to understand as we are members now, after baptism, of the divine family. Family. Open their hearts to each other. They share their thoughts, their affections, their desires, and it it's part of what makes family beautiful and valuable. God, through Jesus Christ, has offered us that relationship 
has revealed his innermost identity because he wants us to know him, that we love him. And so we perceive the Trinity dimly. But if we let him, the Holy Spirit will strengthen us so that we can see and know him even more. Today, as we profess our belief in our triune God, who loves us so deeply, how good to thank him for the gift of the knowledge that, like a seashell, reminds us he is so, so very good. Please stand and join me now as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in your kindness and mercy, almighty God, we now bring our prayers to you. For Pope Francis and the leaders of Christian churches throughout the world, that they may guide us to unity in faith and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith that we may ever be open to the call to be a place of welcome and refuge for all we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for the leaders of this nation that they may work to end the situations in other countries that push people to be forced to leave their homes to seek the safety of places outside their borders we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for an end to gun violence in our streets, schools, and sanctuaries, for a renewed commitment among leaders, and to protect all lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, that they may know your strength and comfort, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, that they may be welcomed into the eternal reward of the heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. St. Leo Parish, the intention of this holy mass and for the special intentions in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Good and gracious God, hear these prayers of your people, those spoken and those in our hearts. May we, be, may we ever be reminded of your love expressed in the community of the Most Holy Trinity. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and will become our spiritual grape. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctified by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice, they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess Still your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. 
grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Leo and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for our failing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Douglas our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
bishop re-emphasizes for Holy Communion that after every person who receives on the tongue, the minister must sanitize their hands. So in case you see that going on and what's going on, that's it. So if you receive on the tongue, I thought about trying to ask everyone on the, who receives on the tongue to come last. I'm not sure that it actually saves any time because it's after each. So just letting you know what's going on for that part. If you love me, keep my commandments, says the Lord. And I will ask the Father, he will send you another paraclete. Abide with you forever, alleluia.
Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, let's see. We've got announcements that come quickly to mind. Be careful out there today. All right. I don't know where the weather is, but I imagine it's on the way. With phase two having begun, the biggest difference, uh, much remains the same, six foot spacing, unless you're in the same household. But 50% of church capacity consistent doing that part. And so for St. Leo right now, that number does not come to mind, but it must be 300 or so, because I think we can fit 600 here when everybody squishes. We still have to do all the cleaning and sanitizing and all of that still goes on. Today, with, on the off chance, you're one of those people on Sundays that goes to Mass in the morning and Mass in the evening. My understanding of the, what the bishop sent us is that all of the Diocese of Lafayette Sunday evening Mass, afternoon and evening Masses have been canceled. So before you go, if you're going to do that, I would check in and try to figure that out because I think they have all been canceled. Congratulations yesterday to the two newest men ordained to the priesthood for the Diocese of Lafayette. Brother, now father, Father John Joseph Bork for the community of Jesus crucified and Father Andrew Colleen. So many, many congratulations to them. The Lord be with you. May almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.